continuing with quantitative analysis after you've selected your elements in the element condition now we have to establish the measurement order okay so if you click on this uh, it shows you the five spectrometers the element and the crystal that will be diffracting the incoming uh, K alpha X rays. Okay. Uh, now this so far looks pretty good. We want to spread out the elements on uh, different spectrometers as to save time, so that, you know they can run these at the same time. This this analysis won't take too long. Now magnesium. I mean, you could put it on the fourth spectrometer, but uh, we prefer magnesium to be. Um, we we prefer the TAP crystal on magnesium. Um, if we don't get good data for magnesium we can change it over to, to channel 4 if we want to. But this looks good so far. The other thing we like to do is uh, the indicator here of the crystal in each uh, spectrometer. We can change that to the position in which the crystal um, is uh, located at for the major or the principal peak for these elements. So for example, uh, this is the wavelength at which the primary x-ray peak for silicon will be located and, and where the TAP crystal moves to diffract specifically that uh, wavelength. Uh, we like to order them sequentially if there's multiple elements in one spectrometer. Okay, and in this case, uh, this is fine. We can go from uh, the lowest wavelength to a higher wavelength and we like to do it sequentially so it saves time for the crystal to move back and forth in the rolling circle and and makes for uh, shorter analysis so everything looks good here but we have one thing we have to check for is the element condition and this gives us uh, information. All the information here, we have the element, the name, the x-ray name, these are principal K alpha x-rays, uh, the order in which it's analyzed, so, um, and the channel or the spectrometer, the crystal, its uh, position, the back plus and back minus are the what brackets the wavelength area, so the, they're the, uh, the area around uh, let's in this case in on element one it's the area around uh, silica so it's um, uh, it kind of brackets the the silica k alpha peak okay now the the only issue here where you'd have to mess with this and you might want to contact uh, fcam staff is if we have peak overlap and if we do um, you can click on this button over here to see if we have any and then you can adjust the the bracketed area around the major peak to avoid certain peak overlaps because it might be counting extra uh, uh, hits or counts per second for that element when it when it's truly not there and it's just uh, picking up something else. So here, for example, the silica K alpha peak uh, at this um, wavelength has a peak overlap with manganese K beta five peak. Um, so, and it's located right here. Now, this there's the wavelengths are so close together; it's c almost completely unavoidable. But in this case, we're not too worried about it. First off, because there's very little manganese in in, in this olivine, and it's not very it's not a high con concentration. And it's also uh, a K beta five uh, energy line, which is a fourth order energy line, and uh, it's not really that important. It can almost be ignored. It won't really affect the outcome of, of the calculation of the data. Now if you have first order overlaps that may be a problem. Um, and also uh, yellow is kind of like the cautious peak overlap but sometimes you'll have red. Uh, sh some of these will show up in red and those have to be adjusted for. Um, and here at FCAM we can help you with that. You can call us and we can help set up the analysis for you if you're not comfortable with this. It takes some time before you get good enough and comfortable enough to, to change these settings, but so far uh, there's no big problems with uh, peak overlap. And the only other thing I'd like to mention here 
is at the bottom of the box that just verify that all these elements appear to have been calibrated and they're calibrated and it's indicated by the calibration if they have this if it's labeled diff for differential here and if it has that means we've run the calibration uh, we've done an SEA calibration on the elements so usually that that should be okay so you can hit OK here and now you're done with the element condition so you can hit close All right. the next step would be uh, to select the standard condition okay now this is uh, where you would select you know how you're comparing your collection to what standard okay and you have to do that for every element so for example right now it's set up that silica is going to be compared to the plage anerthite 65 standard which um, may or may not work I think this we've we did the olivine standard just recently so this would probably be a better standard to compare it to so let's change that now iron we can also compare this to the olivine that we just standardized okay nickel all right olivine good manganese olivine from june 9th okay and magnesium let's also choose olivine now the i know for a fact i've looked at the standard composition of the olivine that we standardized and it has low low iron it's very forsteritic um, so i anticipate maybe there being a problem with using uh, the the iron olivine as a standard because i'm i think the olivines in this magma will have higher concentrations of iron so we may have to change element two to a different standard but we can do that after the analysis and that's okay because uh, we can use a different standard that's a closer in concentration in iron to our unknown sample uh, but we can do that post analysis and then we can r correct the data but we'll see if this works out and and it, if we get uh, uh, you know our totals don't come out so well for the unknown sample then we can play around with the standard condition so that's okay we'll leave it like this for now okay so let's go to measurement and go to additional functions this is just additional functions right here and always make sure that these three peak search always background measurement always and synchronous measurement are always selected usually they are but we just like to double check all right finally so this concludes the preliminary settings on setting up for quantitative analysis uh, we've got our standards that we like uh, uh, comparing it now let's let's go ahead and pick some points <laughs>